Femur or tibia? Which bone is better to lengthen? What's up guys, Victor here, and today we're gonna to be talking about which bone you should be lengthening for your surgery, the tibia or the femur bone. But real quick, for those of you who are new here, let's take a step back and break it all down a bit. So limb lengthening surgery is a procedure that can increase the length of a bone. It's typically used to correct leg length discrepancies, which is when one leg is shorter than the other one. It's also used in bilateral cosmetic stature lengthening for those looking to gain a few inches in height. So there's two main long bones in the leg, the femur and the tibia. The femur is the thigh bone, while the tibia is the shin bone, which is accompanied laterally by its sidekick, the fibula, which both make up the lower leg. Either or both the femur and the tibia bone segments can be lengthened through surgery, but there are pros and cons to each option. Let's start with the pros and cons of femur lengthening. The first advantage with lengthening the femur is that you can get more overall bone length, which if you're doing it for stature, means more height gain. And this is due to it being naturally longer in length, you have a better chance to gain anywhere from two to three inches without developing serious complications. Another pro of lengthening the femur is that it's often the less complex of the two bone segments. This is because the femur is a single bone while the tibia and fibula are two separate bones. Also, the femur usually heals a little bit faster than the tibia because it has better blood flow. Um, it's surrounded by these big thigh muscles while the tibia is only surrounded by your calf muscles, more so posteriorly. This is often why, you know, the anterior cortex which is the front of your tibia bone, tends to heal a little bit slower. However, it's really important that you eat a healthy diet and do your rehab exercises to ensure that the bone heals properly and you regain your full range of motion. The last pro of femur lengthening is that it can be slightly less expensive than tibia lengthening at some clinics. This is because there's only one bone to lengthen, which means that there's less time in the operating room. However, the cost of lengthening can vary from clinic to clinic, and um, it also depends on the device, so it's important that you definitely check with different trustworthy and experienced clinics before making a decision. When it comes to pain, some quadrilateral lengthening patients who have had both femurs and tibias done have reported that the femurs were less painful than the tibias. However, others have said the opposite was true. So in the end, the amount of pain you're gonna experience will vary depending on your, your pain tolerance and the type of surgery you've had, the lengthening of the device, and so on. Now, one of the biggest downsides to femur lengthening is that it can change your proportions. The average interlimb ratio, which is the ratio of tibia length divided by femur length, is about 0.8. If you lengthen your femur by more than six and a half centimeters or so, this ratio is gonna be skewed and it's gonna be more obvious that you had lengthening surgery done. So when it comes to proportions, doing the tibia, it seems that there's just a little bit more leeway in skewing the interlimb ratio and not being noticed in public due to its vertical alignment and overall structure. Nerve irritation is another potential downside of femur lengthening. About 30% of patients experience some degree of nerve irritation, which can cause discomfort, in addition to the bone pain and muscle tension. The sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in the body and it runs through the back of the thigh and down the leg. And when you're lengthening your femurs, that big fat sciatic nerve can get stretched and irritated. This can cause pain in the popliteal fossa, which is the back of your knee, uh, the shin, and all the way down to the bottom of your foot. The good news is, is that the nerve irritation typically resolves itself over time, and your surgeon may even prescribe medication like gabapentin to help out. However, it can take several months for this nerve to fully heal, and in some cases, a minor surgery to you know, decompress and relieve some of the pressure on the nerve can help out as well. The final downside to femur lengthening is the risk of axial deviation. This is when the femur's anatomical axis, which is the line that runs through the center of the bone, changes during lengthening. And this can cause the knees to knock inward, causing valgus, AKA knock knees. Now there are surgical techniques that can help prevent axial deviation. However, it's important to have your x-rays assessed by a surgeon who can, you know, who is an experienced surgeon in limb lengthening and they can help to ensure that you are at a lower risk to have knock knees or some sort of axial deviation. All right, time to talk about the tibia. So the only exclusive advantage that we didn't mention earlier is that it's easier to do physical therapy and rehab after tibia lengthening. And this is because the tibia lengthens from the knee down. This means that you're gonna have typically greater mobility and range of motion for a majority of the exercises and stretches that you need to do during lengthening. Now, the tibia typically has a higher risk of complications, and in my opinion, it takes a greater level of surgical skill to perform well. Some of the complications include ballerina foot, which is a condition where the foot points downward due to a contracture of the calf muscles. Another complication could be drop foot, which is a condition where the foot drops just like a ballerina foot. However, it's due to the weakness of the muscles that can raise 
raise or dorsiflex the foot upward because either of compression of the common peroneal nerve at the fibular head or compartment syndrome um, in the tibialis anterior sheath. The good thing is, is that with an experienced limb lengthening surgeon, you can get a prophylactic nerve decompression at that fibular head or a fasciotomy at that tibialis anterior compartment to reduce this from happening big time. Pre-arthritic conditions can also occur. This means that the joint is at risk for developing arthritis early on, and this could happen if your axial alignment is off or you know hardware is improperly implanted. Um, you know it can occur in things like your ankle or your knee, and this can lead to long-term pain. And this is often the result of a lack of surgical experience or using something as simple as blocking screws or proximal or distal fixation. And one more complication or issue with tibial lengthening that I've kind of found is acute patellar tendon weakness. And I say acute because it's in a short term and I definitely developed this myself. It does go away over, over time, but it's because the nail insertion can cause pain and decrease in power output for some time after surgery. Now, if you're getting the surgery done with an internal nail, it's inserted into the tibia through a vertical incision along the grain of the patellar tendon. Now, this can cause pain when you become active again after surgery. However, with soft tissue techniques and modalities like A-STEM or the Grassen technique, you can improve the prognosis of the integrity of the knee. Um, and you know, that's until you have to get it out. <laughs> I'm just kidding, no. Um, actually, I'm not. That suck when you have to get it out. Oh, and I should probably mention scarring as a con of tibial lengthening as well. You're likely to wear shorts more than briefs out and about, so you're gonna have your surgery scars after tibial lengthening exposed a lot more to the public than you would with femur lengthening. Um, and this could bring up the uncomfortable conversations um, at least until you the, the scars fade. But I never personally ran into more than two people in the past decade since I had my tibial lengthening surgery done. So there's probably nothing for you to worry about, but I just wanted you to know anyways. All right, so which bone should you choose to lengthen? Well, this decision depends on a number of factors, including the amount of height gain you want, your pain tolerance, the amount of risk of complications you wanna take on. So if you're looking for the often cheaper option with a shorter recovery time and less severe complications, then my opinion, femur lengthening is a good choice. However, if you want to have a slight, slightly more aesthetic proportion, or if you have a discrepancy and it just makes sense to balance out the knee height from the lower leg, then tibial lengthening may be a better option. In the end, the decision of which bone to lengthen is up to you. You should talk to your surgeon about your individual structure, your goals, and determine the best course of treatment for yourself. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this video helps you through the pros and cons of tibia versus femur lengthening. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Um, if you found the video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. And until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out. Peace.